This will be the first of a series of videos where we cover some intermediate level topics in the Go programming language. These videos are intended for someone who already knows the language syntax and has written some programs. These videos might also help someone coming from a different programming language to reach an intermediate level proficiency in the Go programming language. In this video, we will be mostly covering the mechanics of arrays and slices in Go. The Go programming language has both array and slice data types to store a list of items. An array is a contiguous block of memory. Each element in the array will be placed next to each other in memory. The buffer variable is an array of 256 bytes. The memory layout of this variable will look like this. Go initializes the memory of all variables to its zero value. In this case, all 256 bytes will be set to zero in memory. Similarly, the numbers array will look like this. Each element of the array here is an int32 data type. An int32 data type requires 4 bytes. Arrays are not used very often when writing programs in Go because their size is part of their type. For example, in this code, the array with two integers defined in the main function can not be passed to the helper function which accepts an array of three integers. They are different types. Also, the arrays are not growable. You can not append more elements to an existing array. A slice is a data structure describing a contiguous section of an array. A slice is not an array. A slice describes a piece of an array. The slice variable is represented in memory with three elements, length, capacity, and the pointer to the first element in the backing array. Here, the pointer part will have the address of the third element of the numbers array since we specified index 2 as the start of the slice. The second element represents the length of the array, which is 2 in this case. The third element is the capacity of the backing array. The original numbers array had a capacity for 6 elements. However, our slice starts from index 2 only and thus it can only use the storage of the numbers array starting from that location. Thus, the capacity will be 4. The built-in functions can be used to get the length and capacity of slices. Go exposes this runtime representation of the slice header as a struct type in the reflect package provided by the standard library. If you try to access an element in the backing array at an index equal to or greater than the length of the slice using the slice variable, the program will panic. However, it is possible to re-slice the same slice variable up to its current capacity and access that element after that. Note that you can only do this up to the slice's current capacity. Slicing beyond the current capacity will cause panic. Also, you cannot access the elements in the backing array which are before the starting position of the slice. Go also supports specifying a third index when slicing. This also constructs a slice of the same type, and with the same length and elements as our previous simple slice expression. Additionally, it controls the resulting slice's capacity by setting it to max, minus, low. This has some uses which we will discuss later. You may omit the first index, in that case, it will be taken as zero. You can also create a new slice variable pointing to the entire array. Note that slicing a slice or array does not create a full copy of the backing array. For this code, Go will generate a new slice header for the slice2 variable and the pointer element of it will still be pointing to the same array. Therefore, modifying elements through any one of the variables will be visible to all other variables which are pointing to the same memory. Go allows you to directly create and initialize slices. For example, here you are not explicitly creating an array. Go will automatically create a backing array of the same length and capacity. When you assign a variable to another variable, Go creates a copy of the original value and stores it in the new variable. In the case of a slice, only the slice header is copied and stored in the memory location representing the slice2 variable. Similar copying happens when you pass variables as function arguments. 
For example, in this code, we are creating a slice variable with six elements. Then we pass the slice to another function. Within the function, we are slicing the integer slice to reduce its length by one and returning the new slice. However, in the main function, the length of the original slice variable remains unchanged. When you pass the slice to a function, the slice header is copied and stored in the memory allocated for the function parameter. Here the function parameter is also named as slice itself. Then within the function, we reduce the length of the slice by one and store it back in the slice variable itself. Now the slice variable will have a length of five. The return slice header again gets copied from the subtract one from length function and gets stored in the new slice variable in the main function. So the original slice variable in the main function has a length of six and the new slice only has a length of five. Even though they are pointing to the same underlying array, the last element cannot be accessed by indexing the new slice variable. If you only want to modify elements of a slice in a different function, you only need to pass the slice variable directly. Since it points to the same underlying array, modifying elements within the new function will be reflected outside the function also. However, if you want your function to modify the slice header, you should pass a pointer to slice to the function. For example, if we had to rewrite the subtract one from length function to modify the slice in place, we should pass a pointer to the slice header to the function. The same is true if you are doing append operation in the called function and want to persist the changes. This is because the append operation always modifies the length field of the slice header. It may also modify the capacity and pointer fields which we will see in the next section. The append operation always modifies the length field in the slice header. It may also modify the capacity and pointer field too. When you create a slice with some initial values, the slice header will have the same value for length and capacity. In this case, it is 2. Now when you try to append a new element to this array, there is not enough storage in the backing array. Remember arrays are not growable. The Go runtime will allocate a new array of twice the current capacity, and copy existing elements there. Then the length, capacity, and address fields in the slice header are updated to the new values. The pointer field is updated to point to the starting address of the new array. Our slice is only having three elements, that's why the length is three. The remaining elements in the backing array will be initialized to the zero value of the element type. This is not specific to Golang, most languages follow this process to give a growable slice-like data type. The garbage collector will free the memory of the old array. In Go, the append operation doubles capacity on each reallocation for the first few thousand elements, and then progresses at a rate of around 25% capacity growth. If you do not understand the working of append operations on slice, you may write code that does not behave as you intended. For example, in this code, you are saving a pointer to the second element in the slice in the ref variable. The memory layout will look something like this. When trying to append an element, the backing array is already at its full capacity, so a new array is allocated, and elements are copied there. Then when we modify the element at index 1 and set it to 22, only the element in the new array is modified. The ref variable still points to the element in the older array and will not see this change. This may not be what you wanted. Consider this code where the slice variable holds the first two elements of the data slice. The memory layout for the data and slice will be like this. Now if you append more elements to the slice, it will overwrite the values in the backing array since there is more capacity left in the backing array. Since the memory is shared, both slices are changed now. In this code, we have a get method defined on the store which is a slice of integers. The get method returns a slice of the first n elements. In the main function scope, we are getting a slice of two elements. If more elements are appended to this slice, this overwrites the original store elements.
To avoid such overwriting on append, we can use the three index slicing feature. This limits the capacity of the returned slice to two in our example. So, if the user appends more elements to the slice in the main function since the slice has reached its full capacity, Go will allocate a new array of twice the size and copy all existing elements there. Thus, the original underlying array remains unchanged. Of course, it does not protect you from users modifying the elements by index. For proper isolation, you will need to create a new slice in the body of the get method and copy elements to it. Assume that you have a use case where you are creating a large slice in memory. For example, reading the entire contents of a large file. However, in the rest of the program, you only need the first 10 bytes which you are assigning to a new variable. In memory, this will look something like this. The problem is that the garbage collector cannot free this memory since the data variable is holding a reference to it. Sometimes, this might not be obvious. For example, in this code, the rejects pattern matching is returning a possibly smaller slice. However, this slice points to the array containing the full file content. In such cases, it might be better to allocate a new slice and copy the contents that you need. Since Go has different ways to initialize slices, you can create a nil slice and an empty slice. Their memory layout looks like this. The main difference is that the pointer field of the nil slice is nil. The empty slice will have a pointer to a fixed location in the memory for zero size types. This is an implementation detail, and the exact memory address might change in different Go versions. In both cases, no memory is allocated for a backing array. A nil slice is functionally equivalent to a zero-length slice, even though it points to nothing. The only difference in practice that I know of is that a nil slice will JSON marshal into null whereas an empty slice will marshal into an empty array. I mentioned that Go always copies the memory when you assign a variable to another. Although, this is not a full copy as we have seen in the case of slices. Only what's directly stored in the variable is copied. Similar copying occurs when you use a range loop. The number variable in the loop will get a copy of the element in the slice on each iteration. The important thing to note here is that the memory for the number variable is allocated only once. Each element is copied to that same memory. This code is trying to iterate over elements in slice and store a pointer to integers in slice 2. However, since we are appending the address of the loop variable, all elements in slice 2 will be pointing to the same memory address. The memory allocated for this loop variable will have the last element of the slice stored there when the loop ends. One easy solution is to create a new variable within the body of the loop and assign the loop variable to it. This will copy the contents to the new variable. Since this variable is created on each iteration, each one of them will be allocated at different memory locations. Currently, there is a discussion thread to collect early feedback on redefining this loop variable behavior. 